Hello and welcome along to another weekly football interview from the Honest Football Podcast. Each week we catch up with either a footballing personality or a current or former professional to talk about their experience in the game, how they fell in love with it and all they've achieved throughout their footballing careers. This week we talked to Neil Wainwright, a former professional, once a young wonder kid at Drexham, made a big move to Sunderland under Peter Reid in the late 90s, before going on to become a club legend at Darlington, a club that unfortunately liquidated. We talked to him about the experience of playing in their final season as a club, as well as some of the better, happier memories earlier on. He also had spells at the likes of Shrewsbury and Morecambe, where he continues to work now in the coaching setup of the under-18 side. And he really has got a lot of fantastic football memories to share. So I do hope you enjoy this one. If you do, please put a thumbs up on it. We really do appreciate the support with these interviews. You can subscribe for regular content from the podcast as well as weekly interviews such as this one. But thanks again to Neil for joining us. And I really hope you enjoy this one. Okay, I'm delighted to be joined by Neil now. And I'll start, as I always do with all guests, by asking you to go back to your first footballing memories as a child, whether it be watching or playing. What's the first thing you remember from the game? Oh, that is a tough one. Um, I grew up in Liverpool until I was about sort of uh, seven or eight years old. So my main memories are really just playing on the streets in, in, in front of my house uh, on the concrete. We lived in, in a place called Stanley Park Avenue, which is about mile and a half probably not even that from from Anfield so you could hear the crowd from from our kitchen window which was <laughs> unbelievable so that's that's why I'm a Liverpool fan but anyway the, the, the street was sort of lined either side with with uh with trees but wasn't much grass knocking about so it just used to play against a small really short short walls outside the house and, uh, uh yeah that's my main memory really I'm, I actually remember sort of I think it was yeah well it's 1985 I remember playing outside um because the the match on the telly had been paused for some reason, so I thought I'll go out and play football, and I was actually the that the the game at Heysel. So back then, obviously, I was about oh, possibly about six. Um, so I didn't understand the ramifications of it, but I do remember that quite vividly of me playing outside, waiting, and then and then going back in to watch the match, oblivious to what had gone on. But then yeah. what what just lose the event as one nil. And then I guess moving on, talking about as a fan growing up, obviously you mentioned there you're a Liverpool supporter. What are your first memories of going to football or your first memories watching your club? Um, I think the only, I don't know whether it was my first game going with my dad, but um, I remember going to, to Goodison for the Merseyside derby. So <laughs> I'm sure he must have took me to Anfield first. But anyway, that's <laughs> that's one I first remember. Um, and obviously we were in the away end and... Um, Again, back then there was no seating, so uh, we were all big, massive, high metal fences in front of us, so I couldn't really see. So he'd had uh, had me on his on his shoulders for, for the full ninety minutes. It must have killed him. I'm sure he mustn't have seen anything of the game. But um, I don't. I'm not sure he got the better better deal really, because we lost one nil in that one as well. So <laughs> <laughs> not the best luck to start with. Eh? No, not really. Not really. And then I guess moving on to to playing growing up, what's your first memories of playing competitively, whether it be Saturday League, Sunday League, Kids Counties, what would it be? Well, I didn't really play competitively until I moved away from Liverpool. So I moved away from Liverpool when I was about eight um, and then uh, moved to North Wales, so a little village called Suckton uh, near Mould. And uh, thankfully I had a, an astral turf in the village, which again, <laughs> quite rare back then. Uh, so that was really good, played on that all the time. And, um, the only way I could get into a competitive team uh, was to join the Cub Scouts because it was a Cub Scout league. And I wasn't really keen on Cub Scouts, but I bit the bullet and joined just so I could uh, play competitively. Um, we got battered every week. I'm sure it was something like 10-1 every week. It, it was uh, it was it was an interesting introduction. And I was I was playing a year year below as well, so it was uh, sorry a year above. All the lads were older than me, so it was. Uh, it was an interesting little start for me, but I loved it, even though we were getting beat all the time. I loved it still. Brilliant. And I guess talk to us about the journey then from then to all the way through to becoming a, a professional and starting as a trainee at Wrexham. What was that journey like? What, what were the notable moments along the way? Oh, many notable moments because it's the journey's the journey's difficult, even as a kid. I mean, I feel for these young kids nowadays trying to make their way in, in any sort of walk of life, but football, sort of acting industry, they can be really, really cruel uh, I remember going for a for a trial at Wrexham um, I must have been about 12 at the time um, something had gone on and they had no training venue so we, we trained on the car park at the back <laughs> of, of the race course ground 
and there was literally one light working in the car park and we had something like a half an hour session went into the change rooms after with a few of the other players who must have been on trial and they said sorry lads you're you're not for us so i was i was i was uh, sort of judged on half an hour's uh, car park football really which was which was tough especially yeah. it's it's ironic considering that obviously i went on to play for them <laughs> sold me and stuff but yeah that was that was a tough moment um same with crew i went to crew for a it was like a mass trial so it was a it was a day where was like four pitches over 100 kids trialing um again it's difficult to stand out in those days in, in those sorts of games and um, people are looking for certain things. You're trying to stand out. Everyone else is trying to stand out. Um, and uh, yeah, again, at the end of the day, was told, "No, you're not quite for us." Fast forward six months, I end up signing for Crew because they've been wanting to play. So it can, it can be a little bit funny football in, in that respect. But again, it's it's just a case of um, for me, I think whatever walk of life you're in, you're going to get knockbacks, and you've got to you've got to be determined enough to to back yourself in any situation. Because if you don't back yourself, no one, no one else will. So, um, so when I was at Crew till I was sort of sixteen, I was quite small as well, skinny and small. So, they were dithering on whether to to sign me as an apprentice. Um, so, they offered quite a few lads. They they released quite a few lads. So it's kind of only me really who was kind of in that sort of half boat of whether they wanted to give me anything. <laughs> you obviously thought this kid's got a bit, but he's tiny. <laughs> um, so in the end, I think uh, I think Mike Buxton, it was at Wrexham, um, had checked on the situation, um, got in touch with Crew. So what you're doing with the boy? We we want to sign him, type thing. And Crew sort of said, right, well, fair enough. He's because Crew was a bit of a way from me as well, living in North yeah. Wales. So um, Wrexham was a lot closer. Um, so Crew said, listen, if, for the boy, if he wants to, you know, go there, that's fine. We're still not going to make a decision on him. So, uh, but we we'll feel free to sign him. So. Ended up signing for Wrexham and uh, it, it sort of blossomed from there, really. Two years apprenticeship, quite a few games in reserves under sort of the uh, the guidance of Joey Jones, mainly. Cliff Sear back in the day as well, but Joey was great for me. Joey was still playing at the time. Um, so I'm playing games where Joey was left back and I was I was left wing. This is a, this is a European, <laughs> European Cup winner. So yeah. it was amazing to just even every game I learned something new and it was it was fantastic. And I still I still say that to this day. Joey was a big influence on on, on my early career. Um and um after then it was just a case of just again just sticking in, being determined. Again, knockbacks when you when you when you're not in the youth team when you think you should be, when you're not in the reserves when you think you should be, yeah. and they're not pushing you towards first team when when you think you're ready. And and you just bide your time and and, and luckily I might say get my chance and, and and took it quite well. well. I guess that's the the thing I want to ask about because most pros have got a fairly different account of this, and that's the first moment you found out you were going to be in a match day squad for the first team. What was the the feeling like, and what was that moment like when you made your debut? <laughs> the match the match day squad one was quite a funny one because uh, we we were scheduled to play Millwall away, um, so. It was it was it was an overnighter, I think, was it? Yeah, it was an overnighter. So I got told on the Thursday and it was so this was I think this was the season before I even made my debut. So <laughs> I ended up rooming with with a lad called Martin Shaw, who was also a winger. So he's he's a good lad. But um it was <laughs> um it was just amazing. Again, just back in the days where you had no mobile phones, I waited all day to then go home and then tell my mum and dad that listen, I'm in the I'm in the match day squad. <laughs> That's it. Um, and and just the whole experience. I never, I never, um, I never, I never made the bench, but it was just, it was just amazing. I just made the uh, the the, the travelling squad. Yeah. And the first time I made the match day squad was um, I played in a pre season game against Everton um, in the pre season, and I thought brilliant. I did really well. I thought yeah. oh, this is fantastic. Now I'm going to get a real chance in the first team. I didn't touch the match day squad until. <laughs> December of, of that yeah. season, um, and it was it, it was an amazing experience. It is still goes down as my favourite match day experience of, of my whole career because um, my mum and dad took me everywhere. They they travelled everywhere. Went from when I was really young. Um, it was December twenty eighth, so I said to them, "Listen, I've, I've been in a few squads. 
I've no, not made the bench. I'm not going to make the bench. So it's pointless you coming because my, my nan was up for, for Christmas. I said, just stay home with my nan. Just, you know. So they ummed and ah and said, OK, fair enough. Um, all of a sudden we get to Blackpool um, and I'm named on the bench. Three subs back in the day as well. <laughs> <laughs> no, no keepers on the bench. So three yeah. actual subs. Um, and uh, I was lucky enough to get, get off the bench. Uh, one nil down with 10 minutes left, I think it was. And I scored the winner in the 90th minute as well. <laughs> so my mum and dad have not let me forget it, but uh, <laughs> it was, uh, it was, I'd love to have seen their faces when they put the teletext on and seen 89. It would have been a bit of a picture. I think a bit of swearing as well, probably. Have <laughs> they ever forgiven you for that? <laughs> no, but it was amazing. It really was amazing. Yeah, I don't think you can replicate that feeling in, in, in anything else. It was, uh, it, it was really special, really special. And I guess not long after that, after a pretty strong start with Wrexham in what's now League One, the old Division Two, you then got quite a big move at the time, which was to Sunderland, who were obviously that year going to be on the verge of a Premier League team. So talk yeah. to us about how the move came about and the thought process in transfers, because that's the bit the fans don't often get to see. Yeah, well, it was an, it was an interesting one because I, I got into the team in December. Um, my first start, I think, was either in January or February. Um, so I only played about, I only started, was it, I only played about seven games. I scored three, so I scored the winner at Millwall, I scored against Walsall, and I scored in that Blackpool game. Um, so I made a bit of an impact. But yeah. then um, I remember we played Fulham at home because Fulham were in League One at the time, and Kevin Keegan was manager. Yeah. Um, and there was all sorts of a buzz before the game about... Um, uh, Kevin Keegan was asked about obviously me and 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 uh, my introduction into the first team and stuff. This rising star, and he'd sort of said, "Oh yeah, Brian Flynn will look after him and all this." Um, and and there was a rumor going around Peter Reid was watching. Yeah. So at the time, I can't remember who it was. Um, we played Bristol Rovers. Oh, and his name escapes me. I think he's still playing now. Strike. Ah, <laughs> oh, I thought he was coming to watch him. So everyone's saying, oh, Peter Reid's here, he must be watching. I said, nah, nah, they'll be watching such and such. And uh, as luck has it, yeah, he's watching me. So a couple of games later, um, I played a game against Walsall, scored and then and did my hamstring. So it was my first ever injury, but then I was out for pretty much the rest of the season. Yeah. So I thought it'd all go quiet. Um, and then I was on holiday with my family in the summer. Um, we got back again, the days without mobile phones. So I get back, the house, the house phone rings. Um, it's Bryce Griffiths, the Wrexham chairman. So he said, um, we've accepted a bid from uh, from Sunderland for you. Um, we we want to wish you all the best and, and, and good luck in the future. And it was just the most amazing call I've ever had. Um, <laughs> as, as I say, I'd heard of potential interest and there's a few others in for me as well, Derby, Blackburn, um, Newcastle in for me as well. But Newcastle had come in and said, we'll take him for a week on trial to have a look at him first. So I thought, nah. So early days, Sunderland was the one. And then yeah. when, when the bid came in, it was like, yeah, we're, we're happy with that. So anyway, I went up on, on, I just got with an agent at the time. So I went up to uh, to Sunderland with, with my dad and, and, and the agent. And um, we're on our way up in the car. The phone rings. Uh, it's Kenny Dalglish. <laughs> so with it being a Liverpool fan, yeah. I'm like, oh my God, it's Kenny Dalglish. He says, uh, he's on the phone, he's on the speaker in the car. And he says, um, he says, no, well, we're, I'm not interested in the, in the trial now. We, we want to sign him instead. We obviously we must have heard about concrete interest from elsewhere. So here's me thinking this is Kenny Dalglish, one of my heroes. <laughs> The agent comes off the phone. He says, no, I'll, "We'll leave it. We'll speak to we'll speak to the lad and his dad and see what they think." Um, and my hero was also at Newcastle at the time, John Barnes. But Newcastle had about forty odd pros at the time in the Premier League. I think um, before Kevin Keegan left, he'd scrapped the reserve team as well. So there was forty pros with basically nowhere to go, and uh, it was kind of like chances of getting in a team there. Chances of getting a team at Sunderland who were now in the championship, possibly going up. I think they were playoff playoff final at the time, or they just just lost the playoff yeah. final. And they just lost the lost the playoff final. Um, and um, so it was a it was it was the championship. So I thought me and Dad had the chat. Sunderland been on first. We'd had a, a good feel about them. We we you know had a little look at the club and 
um, it all felt good. So yeah, my me, um, me biggest claim to fame was that I turned down Kenny Dalglish. <laughs> That's a good thing or a bad thing, but but yeah. And then we we turned up at Sunderland, um, and the word was that Peter E wouldn't be there because he was away on holiday. Um, so we got to the ground, just got into the main reception, stayed in my light, and uh, lift opens. There's Peter Reed in his in his shorts, flip flops, and glasses. <laughs> he literally just got off the plane from his holiday to come and meet me. So, me and my dad sort of kind of looked at each other and went, "Yeah, this is this is this is the one for us type thing." And uh, yeah, that, the rest is history, I suppose. Brilliant. And I guess talking about that season, obviously making your debut at a higher level for a new club for the first time. What was that sort of experience like? Because obviously you wouldn't have played at that level before, and you were quite highly regarded at the time. You were almost one of those wonder kids now, as I'd say. Yeah, it was it it was difficult to be fair. I, uh, looking back, character wise, I was quite a I don't know how to describe. It. I was a quiet boy. I was I was a quiet lad, so I wasn't really massively you know social in dressing rooms and stuff and, and and you know life and soul of the party type thing. So I think I was a little bit in awe when I first went there. Um, when you're seeing players like the Kevin Phillips, Niall Quinn, Mickey Gray, um, Lee Clark at the time as well, and it was kind of like wow, this is. Should I be here type thing? And I think if I'd have gone in with a bit, bit of a better attitude as to like, yeah, I, I deserve to be here, then I might have done a little bit better. But yeah, I found it daunting, to say the least, at, at the time. But um, in, in, in regards to the games, I think um, I think I, I made my, my debut in a, in a cup game at York. So again, it was similar level. So that wasn't a yeah. real, real big deal. Um, and I remember playing, coming on for about, 15 minutes against Tranmere in, in, in the league. And uh, I think it was a full house at the stadium. I lied. So that was, a, that was an experience. I remember cutting inside and having a shot and dragging it wide and thinking, oh, imagine if I'd scored that. <laughs> but no, it was. It was all it was all a little bit unfortunate for me, really. I, I, I ended up, I was going really, really well. I, was, I made a couple of appearances in the in the league and, and, and the cup and stuff. And then I, I, I tore my hamstring again. So it was the second time it went. So it went in... Um, in a league game, so reserve game against Man United at the stadium. I remember just thinking, oh my God, because I'd been doing really well, as I say. I'd, I'd just got that trick in the reserves in the previous previous game. All, all things were looking good. Really sitting up, taking notice. Peter Reid was really, you know, giving me a lot of praise and that really killed my season. This was in like sort of November, but yeah. I kept tearing it. I tore it another three times. Every time I came back, I had different parts of, you know, train. I train for a week, and then all of a sudden it go. I, I train for a couple of weeks, and then and then come on in a reserve game, and then it go again. So it's really, really difficult for me. Um, and then obviously they won the championship that season. Yeah. Amazing celebrations, <laughs> and top bus tour around Sunderland with hundreds of thousands of people as well. It was, it was amazing. But then in the summer, he obviously Premier League, bit of money, he signed a few wingers. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it kind of killed me off a little bit, but um, I had a little bit part here and there with uh, with cup games and stuff. But yeah, I was a little unfortunate. But again, if I'd had a, possibly a different mindset at, at the outset, I might I might have done a little bit better because I'd, I'd, I'd still back my ability and 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 my physicality and stuff. But again, just mentally, I think when I went there, a little bit maybe should I be here type thing. And a little, you know, am I like am I good enough? I think, but. Yeah, and it, it was a big move because obviously I, I, I was what twenty at the time, moved away from yeah. home for the first time, which is which is quite a way away as well, but a couple of hours away from home. So it was a, it was a big thing for me at the time, and and all things put into the melting pot made made, made it difficult psychologically, which is which is one of the most important things in football, really. Absolutely, and I guess. The combination of the Premier League promotion for Sunderland and injuries led to a loan spell that probably became one of the most important in your career as it led to the next half of it, which was at Darlington. So it talk did. to us about that. And you had one at Halifax as well. But what was that like? And after that loan spell at Darlington, did you know you were going to be there permanently at some point? Did you feel it? Um, and the loan spell was brilliant. I remember uh, they, they told me about the loan spell. Was it Bobby? But I think Bobby Saxton said to me, I think because there had been talk of the, the loan spell and he'd said, yeah, the loan deal's gone through, Wayne. He said, uh, you'd be playing playing at the weekend. He said, guess what? I said, what? He says, live on Sky. I said, oh, OK. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe maybe you live on Sky against Peterborough uh, and uh, true to form, bag the winner. So um, <laughs> it, it was great. But, um, but no, it was... It was a it was a fantastic club, Darlington, and, and many many happy years there. And 
Um, even when I went there, it was it was it was it was superb. The old ground feet, it was a lovely little ground. Um, when that was sort of even half full, it was it had a fantastic atmosphere. Oh, you get some some decent crowds there, but no pitch was awful. But um, <laughs> <laughs> but no, again that was a, another fantastic loan spell um, for me. I think I scored again uh, prolific early on within the within the loan spell. I think four in the first six, um, and then there was talks of a potential permanent move. But at that time. I didn't want the permanent move because I still wanted to try and give it a go at Sunderland. Yeah. Only as it developed the year, the season after, and again a loan spell at Halifax really didn't look like I was going to get a get a look in at Sunderland. However much I wanted it to happen, yeah. um, and that's when I ended up at, at, at Darlington. So there was, uh, I think at the time, I think Peter Reid had spoke to me and said, "I'll oh, be wanting to go out on loan at Carlisle." And it's, this is right by deadline day. And I knew of Darlington's interest. And yeah. I was kind of fed up at that time. I was kind of like, I want to get out permanently. Whether it was the right decision to go take a, as big a drop in leagues at that time in the permanent move or not. I don't know. It's up for debate, I suppose. But I'll never regret the decision. As I say, many happy years at Darlington. But yeah, they came through with £50,000 uh, in the end. Cut short me, me loan spell to, <laughs> to Carl. I was, that was scheduled to go through. Yeah. But... Um, but no, I was happy, and it was um, it, it was a bittersweet moment, really, because it, it was great to to move on to Darlington because I knew what such a good club they'd be, and knew I could be successful there and do well. But again, it was it was kind of that moment where it was that's the end of the, yeah. the Premier League dream sort of thing, and it it, it was difficult, really. But it, it was something that had to be done. I, I could have could have seen out my, seen out my last year in my contract because I signed four years at Sunderland. I was there three. I could have seen out my last last year in my contract again, and just to say I was at another, I was I was at a big club, at Premier League club, but no, I, I had to move on from my career and try and try and get it back on track, really. So obviously, Darlington was the the big bulk of your career, and obviously we'll talk a bit. You ended up going back there, unfortunately, to in the final season of the club, as it was in the end. But what was that spell like at Darlington? Because obviously, you're regarded as one of the last legends at the club before it unfortunately <laughs> fell apart. No. It's a shame the way it's gone. I mean, they're doing a great job of building it back up, but it was it was a great time for me. I think I think fans always appreciate players who excite them, uh, but will also give everything they've got. And that's yeah. that's the thing I, I'm quite proud of in my career that whatever game I played, I give everything that I had. And uh, whether I had bad games, good games, you, you knew if you were playing with me, you knew I'd, I'd give hundred percent. And uh, as I say, fans appreciate that. They appreciate that closing down when when things are hopeless. They appreciate that 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 sprint back to help you fall back out when that's not really your role to do all the time. They appreciate you you going past a man with with speed. And I think yeah, I think there was there was there's kind of synergy there as well because I appreciate I, I, being a fan from such a young age. I appreciate what fans. Um, bring and, and what it what it is to, to people's lives. So there's always always that appreciation both ways. I think I think that's why it is such a, a good relationship and still is really. Whenever I see Darlington fans, they always uh, reminisce and have, have good things to say, which is which is really really nice. <laughs> and I guess moving on a few years later, you had a couple of loan spells, but then obviously your next big permanent move was Morecambe. Yeah. who had not long been in the Football League after that stage. So what was that spell like? Because obviously they were a club again on the rise at that point. Yeah, it was a funny one because um, I had a great season sort of when uh, Dave Penny had come in halfway through the season. So when the next pre-season started, I, I wasn't really in his plans. So it was a strange one really for me after doing so well the season before and all of a sudden in pre-season, I'm not, I'm not in his team. So... Obviously, he had his own ideas of football and wanted to bring in his own players, but it was difficult. And uh, that's why I ended up having a couple of loan spells. I went out to uh, Shrewsbury for a month, um, and then I had a month at Mansfield. I think I've been, I think I've been at Mansfield a week, and uh, <laughs> Darlington wanted me back, but they, they couldn't have me back because of the loan rules. Yeah. Uh, so there's a few injuries leading up to sort of the playoff chase. So I ended up coming back for the last three or four games of the of the league season, and um, and the, and the two playoff games which we lost in the end, in the semi final. But because I'd come back and done well, the kind of vibe was, yeah, you're going to get a new deal. Gaffer's happy with you coming back and, and Martin Gray and that sort of saying, we'll see what happens. And then uh, we're all congregated at Darlington, ready for the uh, the, the offer of contracts and, and the bombshell comes down from the chairman that he's he's cut the uh, cut the budget in half on the boat. <laughs> and uh, some players who were signing contracts all of a sudden weren't. And I was unfortunately in that boat. So again, it was 
there's a fear in football, but certainly when it when it comes to that age, is I never really had any plans in place of what, what to do afterwards. I think I was what, was I 31 at the time, and yeah, you can almost see the end in sight. So it's it was it's a scary time, but luckily, uh, Sammy McElroy at Morecambe at the time rang me a couple of weeks into the summer. Again, all these managers seem to be on holiday. He rang me from his uh, <laughs> from his <manager>. um, <laughs> And said he'd, he'd like what he saw. Obviously, he knew a lot about me from from obviously games I played in the league, and he'd, he'd watch the playoff semi finals and stuff. He said, "Yeah, we, we want to sign you. The bottom line is, we want you." Um, so again, there's that upheaval of because I've been been in the northeast for ten years. You see, yeah. so by this time, obviously, family and that is it's, it's a big move to move somewhere else. But it's the only thing we could really do. That's you know, the downside to the northeast. Really, there's not many clubs where you, where you can go. So. I had, to, I had to make the move and um, made the move across initially on my own for for a couple of months, renting house for a little bit, and then and then the family came across. Um, but no, again, it, the great thing about Morecambe is it's, it's it's a nice little club. It's a lovely little family club. There's the when it came, there was sort of minimal expectations, which which kind of helped the squad at the time, and we did really well that first season, getting quite close to the playoffs. And um, yeah, really good squad, good group of lads. A good feel to it as well. It must have had a good feel to it because I still don't know. So, um, yeah, and it was, uh, it was again, it was kind of bittersweet again because I, I love the northeast, love the people up there, and, and moving away from there it was a big wrench. Love, love my house up there. We've been there 10 years, as I say, and I'm moving the family. I always have a bit of trepidation of moving the family, but the kids were young at the time, so it wasn't, wasn't as bad as it might have been. Yeah. Um, but now we're settled and, and, and it's great. Yeah, I had three years, three years there playing. Blighted by injuries at Morecambe, unfortunately, with me, me Achilles and my calf, um, sort of the end of my career. Don't know whether that's a, a knock-on effect from how much I put into other games down down my career. I don't know. Well, one, one maybe my diet, maybe my nutrition. I don't know. But um, or just what general wear and tear that happens. But unfortunately, it blighted me a little bit when I came here. But um, I managed to put in a few good performances here and there now and again as well. That's the thing I wanted to ask you about actually, because you're of the pros that we've had on. You probably got the most miles between clubs that you've played each time. So when you're thinking about making a move, does it come down to you? How much is the family involved? How much does it come down to kids, as you say, at that stage of your career? Or is it just purely thinking from a footballing point of view? It's kind of taking it all into account, but having trying to have the football at the forefront. So have the football at the forefront, but then if it's going to affect people too much, then you've got to think about it. So... My wife's great. She's always just said, whatever you want to go, whatever's best for you, then do it. So in, in that respect, that, that stress is taken out of it. So that decision on me is almost, yeah, it's, it's, it's my decision. And as I say, the girls were young at the time, so it wasn't too bad. I had a chance at the end of my time at Morecambe to, to go down for, uh, for a little look at uh, South End. Uh, I was thought 33, 34 at the time. Girls were a little bit older and I didn't bother going down because uh, I thought that, what 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 am I going to get at this stage of my career? One two years, really no point down down south as well. Cost of living's higher, so that decision was kind of easier for me. The Morecambe one, club looked great, club looked great on the up, as you say. My first impressions of the area were really good as well. Like the feel of it, really thought you know the family could settle here. Um, football decision there wasn't a great deal else. I got to admit at the time uh, coming in for me. There's a couple of other clubs, but again, down south, which I wasn't too too keen on. So <clears throat> the more northern, the better. You know, if someone on, if someone had opened a club up in the northeast right next door and I could have gone and played there, that would have been perfect. But um, the next best thing was the Morecambe move, and and it's it's gone fantastically well. So so luckily that was that was the right move to make. Brilliant. And then I guess towards the end of the, your career, after a couple of other short spells, we'll talk about that season you went back to Darlington. Obviously, I guess when you went there, did you have a feeling with the problems going on that it might be the final season of a club? Or I guess like Bolton and Bury this year, do you just assume people are going to get out of it at some point? Yeah, I kind of yeah, it was a it was it was a scary time because what actually I I actually thought they'd gone before then. Um, they pretty much uh, struggled before then. So yeah. what happened? We'd uh, Craig Little was manager, so I played with Lids. Um, so I'd done my knee playing in a charity game of all, of all things. Um, so I've done medial and that, so I was out, you know, for about three months. So anyway, I get the, I get the call from Craig 
I'd literally so Morecambe had helped me out with me sort of rehab and stuff, and I'd done a couple little couple two training sessions, just not mild sessions with the ball, just to get myself back in. This so Craig ringed me on the I think it was the Friday. He says, "What what do you think about coming back?" <laughs> and uh, so I've been out three months. I'm thinking. I said to him, "Listen, I'm I'm not sure what my fitness is like when I've been out three months." <laughs> I'm not really sure what my knee is going to feel like, I said, because I don't really kick the ball that much. He said, just come down Monday for a, for a practice game, he said, and, and, and see how it is. We'll, we'll have a look at you, see if you're in decent shape. And obviously, you, if you if you fancy having a go, then we'd love to have you. Because at the time, obviously, with the with the money problems, struggling uh, in the in sort of bottom end of the conference, um, couldn't sign anyone. So they could only sign free transfers and under 18s. So... Yeah. Uh, we managed. We, we signed Jordan Pickford on loan. <laughs> <laughs> so Jordan Pickford was in goal for us, and uh, and and he, he'd offered me to come. So I love Lids. He's a great lad. A good, honest football man, and, and I wanted to help him out. And 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 and, and football club as well. Yeah. There's a little bit of ego in there. I wanted to go back and play for the fans <laughs> and, and, and and get a bit of a bit of a cheer as well. But the, the overriding thought in my head was basically, you know, the, the club's done a lot for me. Lids have done a lot for me. Um, I want to try and repay them as much as I can. So I went down for the for the practice game. Some great young players there at the time as well, by the way, some 17, 18 year olds who went on to to, to do good stuff as well. <laughs> Strangely felt really, really good on the Monday. <laughs> so I played really well in the practice game. So Liz is like, Yeah, do you fancy it then? Are you gonna come up? I said, Well, yeah, I said I do. So we had a little agreement where I'd stay in. Uh, they had a cottage with a couple of other lads, so I'd stay in there sort of Thursday, Friday. So I'd drive up on a Thursday, train Thursday, Friday with the lads, and then and then and then play on the Saturday. But yeah, it was it, it was tough on the legs at one stage. I think we played we played a home game on the Saturday. It was it must have been Easter, and then we had Lincoln on the Monday. So first three or four games for me was almost adrenaline. So I was fine. I've been yeah. out for three months. But then I was starting to, to feel it a little bit. We played on the Saturday. I can't remember who it was. Was it Luton? I can't remember who it was. We played someone on the Saturday anyway uh, at home. And then we trained the next day. It was a little cool down, ready for the game on the Monday. I couldn't move. I said to Lids, I said, I'm, mate, I won't be able to play tomorrow. Look at me. I, can, I can't even run. I was so sore. I said, it caught up with me. He went, nah, nah, mate. You'll be all right. You'll be all right tomorrow. So we, get, we played Lincoln away. We get there. In the warm up, I'm, I'm I'm starting. I'm starting to right back. So I says to him, mate, I'm I'm struggling here. I can't. I really can't move. Even nah, nah, you'll be all right once you get going. Once the game starts, you'll be fine. You'll be fine. And uh, I couldn't. Well, once I was playing, I could hardly move. And uh, I remember there's one uh, one of the goals. I think we ended up three nil down at half time. And uh, I'd gone to cover one of the balls in the middle of the park, and I'd gone to the ball had bounced really high and I'd gone to, to volley it clear and I couldn't get up there. <laughs> Snicked in. He's gone clean through. He scored. I think that was the third goal. So at half time, I said to Lids, I said, mate, I'm, I'm doing no one any good here. I'm not doing you any good, the team any good, myself any good. You're going to have to take me on. He took me off at half time. But honestly, it was just a step too far. After I'd been out for so long and stuff, but no, luckily I was all right the week after. But... It was just, uh, it, was, it was a tough game, one, one game too many for me. But but no, it's, I, I won't regret doing that either. Again, it was something I felt I had to do, for, for, the, for as I say, for the club, for the manager, for the fans. And um, yeah, it was, it, was, it was a lovely little abiding memory to, to sort of end off my career really as well. So it was, a, it was a nice way to end off by going going back there as well, which was nice. Fair enough. And then I guess moving on, the, the big question normally for pros when they're coming up to retirement is what's going to come next? Obviously, you've chosen to stay in the game and go into coaching. Uh, was that decision one that you already had in mind? As you mentioned, you didn't really have any other plans in place. So did it sort of force your hands to try and stay in football? A little bit, because only because I'm one of these people who, if there's something important that I'm worried about, in this case, my future and what I want to do, kind of ignore it. <laughs> I'm putting it in the back of my head. So this idea and this this whatever I want to do after I finished my career was was scary to me. So I parked it in the back of my head. So I did a couple of coaching courses here and there and I did a, a seminar with the PFA on, on on next steps and stuff. But it kind of uh it kind of my career kind of finished 
because I, even at the end of Morecambe, when I, when I finished at Morecambe, when I got released by Morecambe, I, I was shocked by the fact the phone never rang. Yeah. And no no one was interested. And that was the scariest part for me. It was almost like, right, that's me done. Um, little bits here and there after that, but I was I was basically done. So, yeah. Um, yeah, it was scary. So then I did a little bit of coaching with the community in Morecambe just to really keep me occupied, really. And then, again, it was also, almost by chance, a company came in to Morecambe to, to set up a development centre. Um, and the manager at the time, Jim Bentley, um, obviously I played with Jim. Yeah. He gave me a call. He said, we want to get involved with this do some coaching and, and, and get you involved with the with potential youth set up of the club from, from the younger age. So I got involved with that, did that for a few, two or three years, and then um, it ended up uh, post coming up for the under-18s job at Morecambe. And again, Gaffers rang me, said, listen, I want I want you to have it, basically, you know, go through the interview <laughs> process and stuff, And but um, we want you on board. I want, I want people in my staff who I can trust, so... Um, luckily, I got that job, and then and and I've done it ever since. Still doing sort of stuff with the development centre before it became an academy, um, and now I still do a lot within the younger younger age of the academy as well. Sort of nine to sixteens, so it's full on, but um, but I enjoy it. It's good, and it's um, it's nothing will be playing, but it is it is the next best thing. Um, people ask me about management and stuff, but that doesn't really interest me. That it's less stable now, obviously with the family and stuff, and. Um, I do I do like working with youngsters because I remember what it was like then as well. That's, that's the biggest thing for me, certainly in under 18. Again, I mentioned earlier on about being quite quiet, sort of yeah, yeah. maybe not as socially uh, adapted to, to, to situations as, as, as many people do. So I was, I was kind of kind of a vulnerable sort of 15, 16 year old. Um, and I feel I can I can I can help these lads in this situation in this current time as well. So that's that's why I do it, really. But no, I enjoy it. It's good. It's good. And I guess we'll move on to some quick fires as you've had a pretty established career across a number of clubs before we get on to the big ones. So who are the best players you've ever played with and against? Let's start with that one. With and against. Um, against, again, lucky. I, I used to keep using the word lucky. I'm lucky enough to have played against um, Eric Cantona when I, when I was at Wrexham. We, uh, it was when he was banned for his Kung Fu kick. So um, we, we were asked by Manchester United to play a select team uh, at, at the cliff sort of mixed of our reserves and sort of their team and stuff and their B teams and things and we and we rocked up at the cliff and Eric Cantona's there like, <laughs> he didn't do a great deal in the game I don't think he run around too much but yeah he's, he was a fantastic player and, and probably probably Paul Gascoigne uh, played against Gaza a few times sort of when he was at Middlesbrough and things and uh, he, he was he was probably one of the greatest English players of all time and uh, nice fella as well I mean I remember a few times you do a few good things within the game and even though he's your opponent he's kind of a well done kid and, and that's that's nice I always remember that sort of stuff which is good players I played with Kevin Phillips obviously uh, European Golden Boot winner okay. great lad Kev as well really nice fella um, I'd probably say Stefan Schwartz so Stefan another lovely fella um, but he came in at a time at Sunderland I remember he came in we were we were on a pre-season trip to Denmark at the time yeah. and um, there's rumours going around we were starting, signing Stefan Schwartz and we're like nah we're not signing Stefan Schwartz surely <laughs> not I think he was at Fiorentina at the time um, but obviously he'd been at Arsenal and stuff and uh, Swedish international um, and yeah he came in lovely left foot one of the fittest players I've ever seen uh, <laughs> I think he had a body fat at the time of something like 3% it was ridiculous and he was he was a big lad as well a yeah. muscular fella and uh, but just the overriding feeling when he came in, apart from being a great player, was he was just a really nice fella, really humble. And you want to say he'd be two of the biggest clubs in Europe, and he was yeah, a lovely, lovely guy, Steph. So I'd probably say yeah, Gazer and Gazer and Cantona for against, and um, uh, Kevin um, uh, Stefan for for four. Not a bad list that. No, um, no it's not. <laughs> the last quick fire one before the big one is managers. So. Who's the favourite manager you've ever played under in your career? Oh, without trying to upset anyone else, <laughs> it's tough that one. Is it? It's because there's like um, you've got you've got different types, but kind of it's it's kind of different to now because all the managers I generally generally played under, they weren't really, you know, massive into 
tactics and, 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 and loads of coaching stuff. Uh, it's changed a lot nowadays, but it was all about how they made you feel, how they made the team feel, how they made the environment within the dressing room. So Reedy was great with that. Peter Reid was fantastic yeah. with that. Again, not massively. More more about sort of, you know, much of the stuff he said was look after the ball, keep the ball, but the, the, the environment in the dressing room was fantastic. You wanted, you wanted to go out and play. Yeah. Um, Bobby Saxton with him was, was the same. David Hodgson at Darlington was great for me as well. He had he had faith in me, uh, which is always nice. He, I think you almost felt it was a personal faith in you rather than just the team, which which is which is always a nice way to feel. He probably had that, <laughs> probably gave that to other players as well, which is probably the sign of a of a good manager. Um, and I really felt like I could go and play for him. But I I'd, I'd, I don't think I'd had, I don't think I've had a manager. I'd say I didn't particularly like or it, it, tough under Tommy Taylor at Darlington I think mainly, mainly because of his sort of uh, direct style of play and uh, is uh, coming from, from the south as well, it's a bit of a north-south divide there but he was a nice fella and uh, no problems, with, I've never had any problems with any managers really, not really a confrontational type to be honest <laughs> but, um, no, they've all been good, right? Sammy, Sammy again Sammy McElroy again was another one sort of in the reading mode really, ne- never really on he knew a good player, so he'd, he'd assemble a good squad. Never massive on the tactical side of it um, or massive coaching sessions. But again, just making making the, the team feel at ease. I always say if, if a team's happy and you've got good players, you've got a good chance of doing well. And aside from any tactics and coaching and stuff, sometimes players get overcoached a little bit these days, in my opinion. But but no, yeah. so not really any definitive answer. But read, read and... Brian Flynn as well. Brian Flynn was the same. Uh, and again, got to mention Brian Flynn because he gave me my start in in, in football. And he was yeah. again, he they, uh, it was the greatest thing about Wrexham. He had he had Joey Jones, he had Brian Flynn, and Kevin Reeves, all with fantastic careers behind. Yeah. All had different little nuggets of, of 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 information they could give you, which really helped. And they all used to join in in training as well. So that was always good. So no, again, I've got massive respect for all my managers. I don't think I could pick one. To be fair, they've all, they've all, they've all, they've all had a, a big part to play in, in in what's been my career, which has been good. That's fair enough. We'll let you get away with that one. Let's move on to the to the big <laughs> question. <laughs> Let's move on to the big one, which we ask everyone who comes on here. The name of the podcast, and you've alluded to a couple of very good memories already. And I'll let you have two, as you've been a former pro. Your favourite football games ever. You can have as a player, and you can have as a fan as well. As a player, it's got to be the it's got to be my debut. Nothing will top yeah top that one. I don't think because um, I think it, it was almost it was almost set up the script as well because Wrexham had never won at, at Bloomfield Road and that gold that record went back sort of fifty years to sort of na- uh, nineteen forty six. So to go on at one 0 down with ten minutes to go yeah. and get the winner was yeah I don't think I'll top that one. That that was a special moment and the fact that it was my first and it was because the be- the best thing about that was because it's it's almost an affirmation of my uh, my aspirations, my ambitions. I'm here now. I've done yeah. it, and I've and I've and I've succeeded. And, and even if I don't play again, no one can take that away from me. Type thing. As a fan, oh, there's 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 a few as a Liverpool fan. I mean, I was lucky enough to obviously grown up in in the heydays of Liverpool in the eighties. Yeah, yeah. So big games like obviously the, the the FA Cup win against Everton to to win the double in nineteen eighty six. But again, I can't go past this damn ball, really. <laughs> it's hard to, isn't it? Yeah, I, I haven't got this massive tale about me going the ground or going to the game or anything. I was sat in my front room, but the game was... It was, it was something special. I don't think... Uh, I know the Barcelona game this year was pretty special as well. But the Istanbul, I don't think... It, for the team Liverpool had out in the day, for the team Milan had out in the day, to be 3-0 down... I don't think anyone would put any money on them coming back from 3-0 down against the likes of Crespo, uh, um, who else was there, Cafu. Uh, Shenko in his prime. Yeah, <laughs> Tuso, Maldini, yeah. Nesta. <laughs> it's a ridiculous <laughs> team. <laughs> Seems like a, a, almost a team you'd pick as the greatest ever. And uh, Liverpool had, let's say, a below standard Liverpool team <laughs> and, and won the game and after Penn, so... So I'd have to say that one. That was, yeah, as a fan, that was unbelievable. I just, uh, I just wish I'd have gone the game. It's, people at the game must have had the best feeling they've ever had in their life. Unbelievable. 
brilliant way to finish. Some brilliant games picked out there. And obviously, for your sake, I hope you're able to get back on the training field and actually doing your job soon, as you'd love to, I'm sure. Yeah, 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 it's been a bit strange. I've been on more Zoom calls. I didn't even know what Zoom was before the lockdown. But more Zoom calls and Skype and everything else than uh, than, I can, <laughs> than I can manage at the minute. But no, it's uh, it's good to do something like this where you keep in touch with football and, and, and keep talking. It's always good to talk about the game when you can't do it as well, I suppose. So hopefully it won't be too long, but... I'm not so sure it, it will be quick, to be honest. We, so. we hope it's soon, absolutely. And we thank you so much for taking the time to come and join us. Thank you, Neil. We do appreciate well, it. Thanks for asking. Thanks for having me.